Dear students, this is Dr. Anand from the Department of Commerce and for today's class I will be talking about one of the most important topic which is called the IRIS data set. And I would also be showing you a practical demonstration on how to cluster the data set pertaining to IRIS data flowers. So basically, I've taken the IRIS data flower, which is very popular amongst the data scientists. So this flower has been classified into three categories. The very first one, which you can see, is the IRIS setosa. The second one is Iris virginica, and the third one is Iris versicolor. It has been classified into three different flowers, but still it belongs to the same family. And this was found during the year 1936 when Fisher, Ronald Fisher, professor in statistics, collected the data and conducted a series of experiment. So basically, we have to look for an exploratory analysis. So what exactly do you mean by exploratory analysis? It is all about understanding the data in different dimensions. And it would give you n number of results which would differ from person to person. It all depends on how the data can be used, how the data can be used, which particular tool can be used to perform the exploratory analysis, and who is going to perform the exploratory analysis. So these are all the different types of factors which would be affecting the exploratory factor analysis. It is all about mysteries. It is like the Sherlock Holmes. So let me give you a very simple classification. So after the demonstration, we would be able to understand data mining, data cluster, data association rule, decision tree. And also we would be in a position to cover data collection objectives, data collection method, data classification, and a decision tree model. So basically, I want you to know that this particular data set was taken by Professor Fisher during the year 1936. And it has been classified into three categories, like how I told you. So we have to first understand the data set, then the data cluster. Then we also have to know what is a vector point or data point and a data observation. And at the same time, we also have to learn how to explore the data to ensure that the raw data So let me take you through the software. You can see that I work on the Tableau software. So this is the Tableau public, which is open for everyone. You can see the Tableau public. We have Microsoft Excel text file, JSON, Microsoft Access, PDF, a spatial file, and a statistical file. It all depends on your comfort zone, which particular file you want to use. If there is availability of the source of data, you can use. If not, you can also download the data, which is freely available from the internet. I already have the data set pertaining to IRIS data. So I'm just going to Microsoft. Uh, Excel menu and you can see that I have different data set here and I'm going to choose the iris data set. So once after I choose the iris data set, it gets imported and this importing time would take a couple of seconds or a couple of minutes depending on the internet speed. So you can see the executing query and the elapsed time, which shows around 17 to 18 seconds. And the process is on request. So please do ensure that you don't refresh this page or you don't click cancel. It all depends on how the data can be arranged. If you want, you can arrange it in a Word file or you can also arrange it in Excel file. So once after the data has been imported, you can see the data which has been arranged here. So you can also look into the sorting field. You can sort it ascending wise or descending wise, or it all depends on your comfort zone. So basically we have the sepal length, the sepal width, the petal length, and the petal width. Any flower you take, it will have the sepal and the petal. So what Fisher says is that based on the measurement of the sepal and the petal, the flowers can be classified. 
So how are we going to explore into the cluster? That is what we are going to learn. So this is the important data. As I told you before, we have different types of sort fields which you can use. You can either use ascending or you can use descending. So it has been classified into four variables, that is iterations. We have the sepal length, sepal width, petal length, and petal width. So once after the data is getting imported, let me go to the worksheet. So once when I click the worksheet, it would again take a couple of minutes or a couple of seconds for the data to get imported. So this is the workspace. You can see the drop field. Drop field is where you can use the drag and drop option. On your right hand side, you can see different chart patterns which you can use. As I've already told you in my previous classes, the chart patterns cannot be chosen by the person who's using Tableau, but rather Tableau would automatically suggest which particular chart can be used based on the feasibility of the data. And on your left hand side, you can see two dimensions. One is measure, the other one is constant. Iris flower is constant and the measures are counted in numerical values. For example, we have petal length, petal width, sepal length, and sepal width. If you take any flowers pertaining to any category, any morphology, it can be a lotus flower, or it can be rose, or it can be jasmine, or it can be lily, or it can be whatever. So it all could be having some measuring categories. So these are the two dimensions which we have to know. And here you have columns and rows. Columns and rows are the place where we are going to place the measurement data. Say, for example, the petal length, the sepal length, the petal width, and the sepal length, I would be placing it here. In between your workspace and your measurement categories, you have three cards, C-A-R-D-S, cards. You can see the page card, you can see the filter card, and also you can see the marks card. Marks card has a lot of classifications like color, sizes, text, details, and toolkit, which we can use. But now let me tell you, I'm just going to do the very basic entry here. I'm going to take the petal length. I'm going to place it in the column. And I'm going to take the petal width and I'm going to place it in the rows. So once after I do this, you can see that the data the size of the petal that is the length and the width has been automatically arranged here in both the axes you can see both the names that is petal width and the petal length so immediately what you have to do you have to go to analysis and you have to remove this aggregate measures it has already been ticked this is a tick mark which you can see here but remove it deselect it so once after you deselect you can see the data which has been posted on a scatter plot. So this is a scatter plot where you can see the data which has been scattered all around. So what are you going to do with this? So that is the biggest challenge which we have to do. So once after you do this, I'm going to go to iris and I'm going to paste it on colors. So once after I paste it on colors, you can see that it has been classified into three categories, which is very easy for us to understand. So the first cluster is pertaining to iris setosa. The second cluster is pertaining to iris versicolor. And the third set, that is the third cluster, is pertaining to iris virginica. So this is a very simple activity which we can do and we can understand how the data can be classified. So it all depends on how the data has been trained and how the data has been used. If I give you an opportunity to conduct the same experiment, the data which you collect would not resemble the same, like how it resembles for me. It would totally be different. It all depends on the data which we collect, the nature of data, the geographical location, and the other internal and external factors which is going to affect the data. So after I do this, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to the analytics. You can see on the dashboard that it has been classified into two. The first one is data, which is for the raw data. The second one is called analytics for performing different types of analysis. 
you can perform descriptive analysis or you can also performing a cluster analysis in the model you can see something which is called the cluster and in this example we are going to do the cluster so what i'm going to do here i'm going to take this cluster i'm going to use a drag and drop option as i told you before tableau is all about drag and drop option where you can play with the data so just use the drag and drop option just take this cluster and just put it into the data field that is a workspace so once after you do that you can see that it has been classified into three you can see the iris data set under iris data set you can see attributes and measures so what exactly do you mean by attributes attributes are those factors which can be used to describe a data say for example let me take iris flower so we all would have seen iris flower so if you have to describe the attributes of iris flower what would you tell you would tell that it is purple in color it is quite lengthy the sepals are quite stout in nature so these are all the different types of attributes which we use to describe a particular data so once after i place it here and i put my cursor here you can see that it has been classified into four which is very easy for us to understand so it also shows the cluster that is cluster 3 belongs to iris virginica it also shows that cluster 2 belongs to iris versicolor it also shows that cluster 1 belongs to iris setosa but let me tell you that we cannot come to a conclusion that this particular experiment is very accurate iris setosa all the blue marks are here but if you look into iris versicolor and iris virginica though it has been clustered but you can also see some interloops which we can call it as out layers it's like whiskers men's whiskers would overgrow and it will look very odd so the same concept has been applied here so when you put too many data together there are high chances that the data would get clustered so this is a different cluster that is cluster 2 and this is a different cluster that's a cluster 3 but unfortunately you can see some of iris virginica into iris versicolor but if you observe iris setosa has been properly clustered so this is a very basic experiment which we have to do pertaining to the cluster analysis what is the lesson which we learn from this the data can be used in any ways i can use the data in a different way and probably you can use the data in a very different way but unfortunately it all depends on the skill which we use to train the data so data training is very important when a bundle of data has been given it is very raw it doesn't hold any meaning and it cannot be directly used for analysis since the corporate world is giving a lot of importance to visualization there is a need for submitting the reports which are quite attractive so that is the reason why we have to use different types of chart patterns like the line chart or the bar chart or the cluster analysis or the tree map or the heat map and one of the basic experiments which we did here is that we classify the iris data set into three categories that is pertaining to iris setosa iris versicolor and iris virginica so once after importing the data into the data source we also expose the same data into the data sheet so this is the data sheet where we can see the a range of different types of factors which can be used for analysis so this data sheet has been classified into data which is for raw data and it has also been classified into analytics so in analytics we use this cluster analysis to cluster the data so that we get a very good representation of the data which is very easy for us to write the inference and also to use the same inference for taking any decisions pertaining to strategic level management so hope you all enjoy this video and let me continue the next video where i would be teaching you on how to check the accuracy of the data so have a great day